back to an episode of Between Us Girlies. I'm Brandon. I'm Lindsay. I'm Bailey. I'm Casey. And happy Women's Month, you guys. I am going to kick it off with our girly quote of the day. This one comes from Miss Margaret Thatcher, and it's a classic. If you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. So happy Women's Month. I love that. Love that. Mm, girly co host. Um, how was everyone's weekend? Casey, you were sick of me. You didn't want to hang out with me this weekend. <laughs> so what did you do instead? I had the best weekend doing nothing. I'm like, sure that's good. the no. <laughs> you guys know when, like, you are just like, have you ever accident like gotten sick and you're like low-key kind of relieved that you got mm-hmm. sick because you can like not feel guilty about not doing anything? I'm gonna be real no. Oh my god. <laughs> I woke up Friday and I was so sick. I think like the no sleep from Aspen like finally caught up with me. I feel like I sound like a little tiny bit nasally. I woke up Wednesday really sick and I was like, yes, I don't have to do anything today. And I just didn't have to feel bad about it. It was so nice. I feel so recharged and I'm ready to have a wild weekend this weekend. So you feel better now. Yeah, I feel so much better. I feel like it was the first time ever in my life that I like was responsible and stayed in when Mm -hmm. I'm sick. Usually I'm just like, no, I'm fine. But yeah, I feel great. Do you go out when you're sick? You'll have full congestion and you'll just be around. I'm like, what are you doing? I have no (laughs) off button. I just like never know when to just say no. And I finally did it this weekend. So how was your guys' weekend? You guys actually did stuff. (laughs) What did we? uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Friday? Friday, we didn't do anything. No. Fell asleep on the couch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Saturday, we went to a rainy day brunch at the Mulberry. Rainy. It, it was, was a monsoon yeah. outside. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. pouring. Um, but food was delicious. We got mimosas. We got espresso martinis. If you're the type of person who likes some Baileys and your espresso martinis, we'll recommend the Mulberry's espresso martinis. That mm. shit was creamy. Mm-hmm. It was good. Um, I love their cheesesteak. I got a cheesesteak at noon. Yeah. How are their fries? They look like the Make kind of McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad because I only ate half my cheesesteak because I thought we were going home after the brunch. So I was like, oh, yup, this is going to be like my two mm. hour snack. Then we like were drinking and eating because we also weren't going to be drinking at this brunch until we showed up and they had some champagne sitting there. Yep. Um, but then I feel like once we were sitting, they're like, oh, like, let's continue the fun. I was like, well, damn. So <laughs> I was, I like looked at my cheesesteak. I like looked out. We're all like done eating for like 20 minutes at this point. I just like take two more bites just to get them in my system. So like, I know I'm not wasting it because I mm-hmm. hate, I hate leaving food behind. Same. Mm-hmm. We got, um, there wasn't really that many people there at all. And we like got control of the iPad and we're just like DJing the whole entire brunch. It was so fun. Like, I saw that on your guys' story and I was like, dude, does each table get their <laughs> own like iPad? <laughs> no, our girl Tiffany, shout out to Tiff at the Mulberry. She was hooking us up with a shot. She was hooking us up with the aux. Like that is like, she needs to be on yeah. the podcast. Like, you ate <laughs> down with the aux though. Like people like weren't getting, like everyone was like clapping, yeah. getting up, wow. a party. Like, we just needed EDM music. Like they were playing like not bad music, just like kind of classics. So I was like, no, 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 no. We yeah. need to take it off by Fisher, plug it in. And everyone was getting bouncing. And then we went to McGillan's. I thought McGillan's was actually fun. <laughs> Me too. I hate to say it, but it's not, I, whenever someone suggested it, I'm like, please, any other place in Philadelphia. Like, it's just, I'm not a beer drinker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so, I'm not that type of bar girl, believe me. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I can be. But when I'm there, it was so fun. It was. Everyone was good on, uh, I almost said ox tunes. Touch tunes. I feel like you guys went at the right time, like on a Saturday night. That's not mm-hmm. our type of bar, but on a Saturday like daytime, I feel like that's a very fun place. Yeah. McGillan's is unbearable if it's packed and it for the first time ever was like moderately crowded. You're like right. we were able to get a table, which never happens in general. Two tables. Yeah. yeah. We like switched tables eventually because an even bigger table opened up and like everyone was being so polite. We like had a few fans there. They were all so sweet. Like I wasn't bothered at all. The music isn't always my cup of tea, but I was just more in the mindset. Like I had texted the girls. I texted you guys on Tuesday. I was like, I'm not going to drink that much because mm-hmm. I was still recovering from Aspen. So like I was there for a short time. Like I was, no matter how much fun I was having, I was going to dip out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like anytime we have like a touch tunes bar, though like Lindsay and our friend Liz they have a premium membership of some sort to the point where like I was like how are you guys seeing all those songs <laughs> and our friend Merritt was like it's because they spent like $27 to see the whole lineup of the songs <laughs> I blow but once my credit card goes into touch tunes it is above me I don't I can't I don't know but we needed that like you are a savior I feel like the music was right and I feel like I was I knew I was having a good time because I saw a picture of beer and I was like that looks good <laughs> <laughs> like I want to drink one of those yeah it was good. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys do anything after? No. 
I ordered Walkworks and mm-hmm. wa- caught up on the Traders and went to sleep. Yeah. I got really sick. I also watched the Traders, <laughs> fell asleep, woke up for church the next day. Amen. Wow. Dear Lord. You know. Yeah. What did everyone do yesterday? It was beautiful. Oh, it was the most beautiful day ever. Mm-hmm. It was so nice. I went for a walk. Mm-hmm. What else did I do yesterday? <laughs> the walk was honestly life changing. I was it? having such a main character moment because I was listening to my AirPods and I was just walking by myself and I was like, everyone's staring at me. Like, I am so popular. Like, that's literally yes. what was I was just saying in my head. Because it was like a beautiful sun day, like sunny day. I had a coffee in my hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went for a walk too, but I was in the suburbs and I was with my mom. Oh, and nice. something that brought me so much joy was all the neighbors going hi hey beautiful day it's like oh my gosh people are kind it's not something we get here so no i'm gonna keep it a buck i because we went out on saturday for a long period of time i just did not do any of my chores i forgot to turn my phone off my i'm so sorry um i didn't do any of my chores so i really didn't step foot outside till like midday because i needed to like fold my laundry I can't leave my home unless I like do my chores first. I'm right. such a Capricorn mm-hmm. on Sundays that like I need to get to work. Like I did like podcast stuff. Yeah. I actually did like my actual job just because I wanted to get ahead before today. So it wasn't really that productive. Oh, it was productive. Yeah, like I woke up in the same headspace. I was like, oh, I took a five mile walk. It was great. Oh, I got wow. home. I got a lot of work done. But everybody was messaging me like, come to brunch, come do this. Like mm. everyone's like, are you going to play in the streets today? I'm like, no, <laughs> leave me alone. And it was so hard to say no because everyone was outside and I was like, I could easily go out and get wasted. But I maintained my strength and I stayed wholesome, proud of myself. I know it's really tempting because I live like in Northern Liberty. So seeing all the restaurants hopping yeah. and bopping. Figo was just popping at like three o'clock in the afternoon. I was like, ooh. Yeah. But about yeah. myself, it's not. I can just walk in there. I like took in a gust of wind and I was like, oh, I could really go to Urban Village, get like a crunchy Caesar salad and mm-hmm. a beverage and just have oh, a day. Sounds good. And it really did sound so nice. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to do it. Well, that is because while this weekend was lighter, this upcoming weekend, y'all are not going to want to miss next weekend's episode <laughs> because we have a packed weekend of activities. Saturday night, we will be at Jam. That is the charity event that we talked about a few episodes ago. All the proceeds go to American Cancer Society. We will have an open bar, open buffet. Oh, We're yeah. going to be eating down looks. No one sent me their outfit yet. Hmm, crazy. Um, <laughs> so I'm really excited for that. And then Sunday. Possibly the most anticipated event of my life. We are going to the canceled podcast in New Jersey. We are going to see Brooke and Tana live. It is my favorite podcast. It's the only one I listen to besides Between Us Girlies. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but I'm just obsessed and I cannot wait to see like what the fuck happens at this. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I've been looking forward to this forever. And I was thinking back to like the first video I ever watched of Tana because I've been watching her on YouTube since like the OG days, like back when she still lived in Vegas, like yeah. her old bedroom. I used to watch those the videos. Story times. Yes. And I was like literally thinking, I was like, wow, I have seen her through like literally every variation of her life. Like yeah. I, I feel the same way about Trisha Paytas. Like when you've been following someone for so long and you see them through their breakdowns, their cancellations, mm-hmm. their comebacks, like it's so crazy when they get to a really cool place. I feel like Tana and Trisha are both in like very like happy places. And yeah. it's just yeah. like, you're like, wow, I've seen you struggle and you don't even like know them. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. So we'll have a crazy packed weekend to recap on next week's episode. But to kick this week off, we have been slacking on our pyramid rankings and I have a fun one. Let's hear it. Um, I think we should rank types of straight men. <laughs> and Gross. kicking off at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> kicking off at the bottom, we have, hold on a second, let me count how many words this is. Make America great again. Mm. That is at the bottom. I don't need to elaborate. Oh, oh Bailey's causing ruckus. <laughs> So I don't need to elaborate any more on that bottom block of the pyramid unless you guys want to go deeper into that. Don't get me started. Nope, that says enough. If I see a red hat, mm-hmm. I am out. Do you guys ever see a red hat like at the gym or on the street and you like squint? You're like, what does it say? Like mm-hmm. you want to be sure that it's like not a Make America It's Great crazy because there's like hats that like are made on that like font type to make it look yeah. like mm-hmm. it in the way like the words, like, the certain amount of words to make you look and be like, oh no, it just says gap. Mm -hmm. (laughs) like no no offense to gap level navy the next one i have i would like to open up for discussion um 
the loud straight man. You know that motherfucker that <laughs> insists on being the loudest person in the room. We could be talking about a gel manicure that this man has <laughs> no knowledge or experience with, and all of a sudden, he's mansplaining to you how the manicure is applied. Mm -hmm. the, like the mansplainer, the loud one talking over makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tend to bicker with those ones because I'm like, let's just push it. You think you know it all? So do I. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. I'm not going to like date them. They're just like so annoying to the point where I'm like, let's go. Let's see how annoying you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like those guys are also the type to tell a joke. And if it like gets half of a laugh, then they just keep telling the same joke all night. Preach and you're juicy. like, dude, it, wa it was barely funny the first time you told it. And they just will not mm -hmm. fucking let it go. And then you see them like a, the next weekend out and they bring it up again. And you're like, how the fuck do you even remember that? That like, <laughs> shut up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Ooh. they just want so much attention. And it's mm -hmm. like, attention isn't for you. Like attention <laughs> is for the girlies. A hundred percent. You're not one of us. Attention isn't for like, you. Why do you need attention? You already get every other privilege. You don't need attention. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me mad. No, I like that. So the next one that I have, I'm going to put this overarching theme as corny. And what I mean by corny, we've, <sighs> we've elaborated on this. Goes to Noto, moves in silence, wears black skinny jeans with a white feather tee. Um... He, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I know each of you has the exact person in mind too. Love him to death, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, we can we can touch base. Yeah, after. yeah. These are the ones that they just they're kind of club guys. <laughs> Lindsay, <you're, laughs> Lindsay is cracking up over here. Like, oh, I feel like you know, you know. Once again, like they also they go out too much. I'm thinking about like four like, different people. <laughs> like going out is also for the girlies. Like why are you getting a bottle? Mm -hmm. that's, that's why not... are you getting drunk? <laughs> like, <laughs> ew. Put yourself together. Yeah. I feel like we're like full Becca Mooring, like for the girls. It's, not the guys. It's women's women. month. It's time to shit on men. Um, hello. I love I it. Did. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I used to talk to this guy and he had this one friend that was so corny. I would physically start to shake. Um, <laughs> cause like, cause I'm like, does he know how corny he is? Like it was just baffled, mind boggling to me. And I'm like, look in the mirror, bro. There's just like speak out loud and look at your Instagram stories. It just like, there's no like uh reflection, self-reflection mm -hmm. on it. There's like a special type of corn where like they think they're like, have you ever listened to the beginning of a Wale song where it's like a, a 90 second intro of him being like, I'm the man of your dreams. Come to me with your sweet touch. I just want to like, it's like, mm -hmm. shut up. Like I see you in my dreams. I manifest you at night. You're, you're my soulmate. You're my, literally, what are you talking? This is not poetry class. Like it is, those guys frustrate me so badly. Like they really think that they are. <laughs> Some kind of elite. Shakespeare? Yeah, Shakespeare. Poets. William. I have always said that if girls had even half the confidence of a 24-year-old straight man, the world would be a different place. Mm -hmm. Like, girls just never think that they're like, that they can achieve something. I feel like there's like a statistic where it's like girls only apply for jobs they think they're qualified for and guys apply to like every job they see. Mm -hmm. Like, if we could just tap into that 24-year-old straight man confidence... I think we could take over the world. I mean, that 24-year-old straight man that texts me. Yeah. Con consistently without, like, just looking, saying, she has not answered. Kind of annoying, though, that it, like, are they DeLulu? Because that's also for the girls. That's true. <laughs> like, <I'm, laughs> I don't uh -huh. think they're allowed to be delusional. You as a man being delusional? It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. It's not fair. So that closes out our bottom unbearable row. Next, <laughs> I move up to the hurtful row. And in that third spot, we have the Pete Davidson archetype. Goofy, medium, ugly, emotionally unavailable. These are the type of men that they get you. They get you every single time. You think you have the power. And then next thing you know, they're fucking up your mental health. <laughs> and you're upset about them. And how did we as a society, and as a society I mean the girlies, gays, days, and the girls, get to a place where we are allowing straight men to do that to us? Or any type of man. Those people have a special gene. I don't know what it is, but they have something inside of them that just says, hey, I'm medium ugly, I'm emotionally unavailable, and I'm ready to ruin you. And it works every time like a charm without fail. I'm telling you it's because they're goofy. Like a goofy guy. I love goofy It's guys. a 10 yeah. out of 10. Oh. Like they're just good 
energy mm-hmm. and they trick you into like they're like charming like the goof is charming mm-hmm. i think it's because you have your guard down like when yeah. you see a really hot guy you're automatically like what do i look like what do i need to do like you just like kind of get insecure yeah. but then when you see like a medium ugly guy you're like a little looser you kind of don't care and then yeah next thing you know they're just like fucking up your shit yeah i have a quick question yeah please <laughs> hit me <laughs> hit me with your best shot <clears throat> um <laughs> you vocal? i know i've been working um scratchy as hell um would you rather i guess trashy hot or medium ugly trashy hot mm. okay yeah mm. medium ugly is the trashy hot guy not funny is it like trashy hot and he's not funny versus medium ugly and he is funny because that feel like changes <sighs> the game for me like if a guy's hot but he's not funny it's like if I were to build a trashy a- hot guy, it would be someone who is really, really hot with like, this is going to sound so bad. Oh, no. With like <laughs> a Jersey Shore aesthetic. Not like the outfits and like the fist pumping. Ugh. I mean like, like tan, that. muscular, smells kind of like Axe body spray, kind of ick, but kind of not. But in the face, like they're eating down. Oh, God. Why are you describing that type? But <laughs> I, I would not like bring that, that home like a to hot my- guy. Yeah, but I wouldn't bring that home to my mom. If like like he like, smokes a cig. Yeah, like he he's <laughs> <laughs> something about him is like a little trashy. Like I can't put my finger on it. No, that is like like yeah. maybe he says like use. Yeah, yeah. And like he's got he those go birds. white vans that like every trashy guy in Seattle wears the yeah. really dirty white slip on mm-hmm. vans. Wait. No, wait a minute. Pause. No, no, you don't own them. Don't I worry. I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always for a trashy hot guy. I, Something about them reels me in. They're big drinkers too. Yeah, because I always see them. Like, <laughs> I always see them at like a bar, or like a like a nightclub. I'm like, yeah, you're trashy hot. But here's the thing: <laughs> I feel like the trashy hot, they're big drinkers, like fun drinkers. Mm-hmm. The goofy hot, they they get drunk as a coping mechanism. Like I feel like they're mm. dark, blue yes. drunks. Like I feel like they're the type to like, call you crying at 3 a.m. Be like, I just need you to listen to me. Maybe that's why I like them. <laughs> oh, I want to leave. <laughs> So I was gonna say, I feel like whenever we see like, oh yeah, he's trashy hot. We always see him like out in a bar somewhere, like mm-hmm. doing some like trashy thing, but yeah. he's hot. But uh-huh. I absolutely agree with you. Pete Dav- I'm, I'm not to Pete Davidson on the phone this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like, so one time we were in Wildwood and Bailey and I were at the bar, we were ordering a drink and there was this man across the bar. I am not kidding you guys. I would rate him an 11 out of 10. I found this man so attractive. Bailey and I were getting uncomfortable. And I don't mean that like disrespectfully to him, but like he, God took his time. Like he was pretty. <laughs> so he's staring at me and Bailey. We're like, <laughs> and he like starts talking to us. Like he comes over and he, he starts like ch- chopping it up with us. And when he was talking, I was like, shut up. And then Brandon came over. He's like, he's hot. Brandon was doing his full routine <laughs> and they exchanged like Instagrams, Brandon and him. And his entire Instagram was him deadlifting oh, yeah. the entire thing. And I was like, you went from being like <laughs> corny. hot to cor- corny, yeah, to corny. Like I was, Instagram is for the oh. girlies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it, it was, was bad. He's out deadlifting. Cause there was like a lot of, it was levels to mm-hmm. it. Like, but he it was, was trashy hot. Oh, mm-hmm. trash. Like I was like, damn. <laughs> so I like salivated. I just, I, re- I remember as soon as you like that, brought back a memory mm-hmm. that was a man yeah he was. well if we saw him in wildwood that kind of puts the pieces together <laughs> like, i was like we're in wildwood <laughs> like i might come here all the time yeah <laughs> with that i do feel like we kind of have almost uncovered spot number two which i would describe as the guy friend that you would never like you would never you would never you would never put him on your friend like maybe he's grandfathered into your group like you would have been friends since you were on the playground but that man maybe once when you were drunk but other than that <laughs> you're not touching him no and when your friends like wait he's kind of cute you're like absolutely not like just you wouldn't put mm-hmm. him on but he's still your friend you mm-hmm. know i feel like we all got one of those but at the top wait with with that <laughs> oh yeah yeah Please do you elaborate. do you judge if he like brings a girl around do you like judge the girl or you like want to oh, like save her? <laughs> he's not allowed to have another girlfriend no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no she's cute we support yeah. but i do feel like this is gonna sound fucked up I do feel like they always have the worst taste. Like, I feel like they bring around someone who is just not it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel the opposite. I feel like, so like we have a very close guy friend who Brandon posts Ew. all the time. Ryan. Oh. <laughs> and he was the first like Ew. guy in my life. I always say in my wedding, I want him on the girl's side, like in a dress, like he is family. 
And any girl that he would ever bring around, especially his current girlfriend, who we all love, like I'm like, yes, date him. He's great. And I love his girlfriend That's more than anything. That's Ryan's spot number one, bestie. Oh, here That's we go. Ryan. I thought computers. that you were I thought you were mixing up. Let mm. me be quiet. Let me pause. Lovers and friends. Ryan is spot number one, which mm-hmm. is dead ass one of the girlies. Yep. Like mm-hmm. okay. he is the friend that you would recommend. He is like your close circle friend. He is down to gossip. He's down to take pictures. He's down to party. He'll still buy your drinks occasionally. I remember, oh my God, Ryan at the White Briar. I made the funniest TikTok I think I ever made. It was to that Gabby Hannah sound that was like, Daddy, always protect his little baby angel girl. In the middle of the White Briar, I had Ryan give me two vodka sodas. And I was like, when you make your guy friend buy all of your drinks. Oh, that's funny. Like, Jake is a is a girly. Yeah, my yeah, my boyfriend, I was telling him for jam, he's the only guy coming. And he like got his like face lit up. He was like, oh, he was like, I'm one of the girlies this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like it's just like he's one of the girls like Mm -hmm. you they're straight and they i think that's important to note because someone commented this on my tiktok they were like but are they actually straight yes Mm -hmm. they are so straight they're so comfortable in their sexuality that they can be one of the girlies and they don't give a fuck if you think that that makes them gay because they're so straight that they're not Mm -hmm. they also like hype up their girlfriends and their other friends like it's so refreshing when i'm like ryan your girlfriend looks hot he's like yep she sure is. Like, it's, like, so refreshing yeah. to have a guy who's, like, confident and strong in your group who, like, also is an idiot and one of the girls. Mm-hmm. That's a great placement for number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there's my pyramid this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing. <laughs> no, I agree Brandon. with everything. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. All righty, gang. Since Brandon had a fun little game, it's time for mine. So, <laughs> let's play a fun game of Would You Rather. It's not as sick as Lindsay's. But, oh, Lindsay, <laughs> I'm not as creative as you. Um, but would you rather be called Miranda from Sex and the City or Carrie from Sex and the City? I'm going to go with Carrie. She's a messy ass bitch and she's annoying as shit. But Carrie carries. Like, she carries the show. She carries the show. I respect Miranda. I really do. I respect her work ethic. I respect her as a person. I think she has a good heart. But God, that bitch is fucking annoying. Like every scene she's on, I'm just like, let it be over. Let it be over. (laughs) Mm -hmm. She gives me a little bit of the ick. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I just, I wouldn't want to. I just couldn't imagine someone like looking me down in the eyes and be like, you remind me so much of Miranda from Sex and the City. Like, what What will possess you to say that? Someone said that to me before. I think I would go home and turn the lights off and not leave. <laughs> like, I just, that is not, I feel like that is the most backhanded compliment, compliment you could ever get. Just backhanded. Mm. So yeah, I'm picking Carrie. I think Miranda's pretty dreadful. She does a great work, work ethic. Maybe that's why someone came up to you, Bailey, and was like, you remind me of Miranda yeah. because she's a hard worker. But she irritates me as well, Brandon. She does give me the ick when she comes on screen. It's a jump scare sometimes. <laughs> I think Carrie's problematic. She eats down with clothes. Her little chain smoking like m- episode that she has the entire series. It was the 90s. Mm-hmm. I know, but I loved when she tried to quit. Like she just lied to herself. Like it's so giving my aesthetic. Like not the smoking, but lying to yourself. I just see myself in her. She's irritating, but I love her. Mm-hmm. I am going to say Miranda. Um, only because Carrie's so goddamn annoying. There are so many character flaws with her. Like, you guys, look at it. But Miranda was the only one who told Carrie to be like, hey, you're a horrible friend. You only care about Big. You only hang out with us when it's convenient for you. She's the only one to set up for her. And Carrie got pissed off about that. I forgot about that. Yeah. I was going to say, I might be twisting that around. But (laughs) that's how I remembered it. And I just, yeah, Miranda, she's... There are so many faults with all these characters. Um, but I don't know. I, I pick Miranda. We're mm. both working girls. <laughs> I was never as a big Sex in the City girly as you guys, but mm-hmm. I do. I live on Pinterest, and Carrie eats down on Pinterest quotes. And I feel like I, I have to just pick her for that. She has a lot of good one-liners that even for people who haven't watched the show have like stood the test of time, so... You know who Carrie is if you don't. Yeah, like like she's, yeah, yeah, she's the, I always reference everyone to be the Lauren Conrad of Laguna Beach because she was my icon and like Carrie was the Lauren Conrad of Laguna Beach. Like she was the most popular one for people who don't know her. So that's a really good connection. Mm -hmm. I always pick out whenever I'm watching a reality TV show, I'm like, who's the Lauren Conrad? Like who's the one that's like the most famous in this group? Damn, I never watched Laguna Beach. Oh, that show ruled my life. No, I did. I did. 
Was Laguna Beach? Oh no, I watched The Hills. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say I watched The Hills with like Whitney. Yep. I literally went to Fitum because Lauren Conrad went to Fitum. Oh wow. Did you like Kristen though? No, I hated her. (gasps) Like, I mean, (laughs) if you were like a Lauren Conrad stan, which Mm -hmm. I was, you obviously had to hate Kristen. And then as you got older, you like realized it was never that deep. But speaking of Kristen. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Have you guys seen that on TikTok? Wait, I saw one TikTok with like a whole bunch of, what's Mm -hmm. going on? So she is dating a 24 year old. And she's like, what, like. 37, I think. 30, I was going to say 43. Ooh. She's 37. Regardless, she like has kids and she's dating this 24-year-old and she is making the cringiest TikToks with him. Yeah. Like, he's like a country TikToker. I was saying, I a lot of like cowboy hats. He has like an was... account called Montana Boys. Oh my God, not the Montana Boys. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was coming. I'm sitting here like, let me shut <laughs> up. <laughs> yep. Which, like, and she, like, they have this one song where it's, like, the, like, country song, like, she's country, and, like, they do, like, like that. Oh, like, that's who was in the video then, the yes. Montana boys. They so do, it where, like, they, they set up the camera, they're playing the song, one guy sings one lyric, does a little sexy face into the camera, he goes to the next guy, they're all doing this, and then the last line is, like, Kristen coming out. But it is so horrifically cringe, and I have just been watching everyone roast her for it, and I, like, like her now, yeah. but... That's kind of making me change my mind. See, here's the thing. I was kind of in support because he is very sexy. He's he's a very attractive young man. 24 years old. Totally. Like we weren't 24 three years ago. No, no, I understand. But for her, no, I get it. Continue. Right. I'm sorry. It is sick. Here, here's the issue, which I'm going to get to, to your point. Apparently, oh, right. the young man still has his prom pictures on Instagram. <gasps> And apparently they're not that far back. Oh, no. So that is where it's a no from me. Oh. Unfortunately, I am out. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I'm happy for Kristen. Live your best (laughs) life. Living always. Um, Yeah. He he is very attractive. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. That's That's so unfortunate. Oh, wow. That made me like. (laughs) And she just like is one of those things where if it wasn't in the world of TikTok, maybe like a few. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, if it wasn't in the world of TikTok, maybe a few people would make fun of her. But yeah. unfortunately, we do live in a TikTok era where like if a joke starts to take off, it will not end. Yeah. And so now it's just she's just going to be the butt of a lot of jokes. For I a have while. to ask, like, and this isn't me being judgmental. I hope it doesn't sound like that because to truly to each their own. But I feel like age gap relationships are so interesting because it's like if I as a 27 year old were to date a 40 year old. It's like, yes, he's old. He might have kids, but at the same time, we may have shared experiences. He may be able to help me through life with like money and problems and dating and things like that. A 24 year old and a 37 year old, as a 24 year old, like what I wanted to do was drink. Like I thought $100 was a lot of money. Um, like I didn't really, I, I, I didn't care about anything. It's like mm-hmm. you're 37 with kids. Like what do you, again, to each their own, but like, what do you guys talk about? Mm-hmm. Like what, what do you do for fun? Do, is he like in a position to be a stepdad at some point or a step boyfriend? Like what, what's going on? Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. obviously don't know Kristen personally, but I feel like it's probably, I don't want to call him a rebound, but I feel like she just got through a divorce and I feel like she's probably just in like the need of fun. And it probably mm-hmm. feels so good, honestly, not to have another 37 year old mm-hmm. who also is going through that. And like, she's got this hot ripped guy who's young, full of life and energy. And mm-hmm. in a weird way that probably makes her feel like really good. And if that's what she wants right now, like pop off. And if it ends up becoming something serious, like I remember, remember when Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher were dating oh for like God, that, yeah. like things like that have happened before. It didn't last. I don't know if this will last, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to knock on Kristen. I think the TikToks are a little cringy, but like whatever, she's getting PR out of it. So get your bag. Mm-hmm. Um, it's and true. He, he's a slam piece. I'm not, I'll say it again. <laughs> a slam piece. I need to be more investigating. He's a slam piece. No, like you guys, like, he is real. I like get uncomfortable watching their videos. Roadies. Like I'm 24 <laughs> too. Shit. <laughs> Sorry. No, yeah, I wasn't trying to bust on Chris. No. Yeah, no, no I, I don't know one. her, and I haven't no, seen the, the TikToks. I just literally wonder, like, do what you do you guys talk about? think that there is kind of a double standard, though? Like, do you think when the relationship is, like, with an older man and a younger woman, do you think that that's more accepted than older woman and younger man, or vice versa, or totally on the same playing field? Hmm. Well, it's funny we're talking about this, because I don't know if you've ever seen that or heard about it. It's called December, May, May, December. Mm. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. called May, December. And it's about, remember Mary Kay Letourneau when we were, like, younger? She was a teacher who slept with her student. Yes. And I didn't realize, because we were so young at the time, 
she slept with the students. He was 13 and she was <gasps> 20 Ew. something, mm-hmm. let's say 27 or 20, like that age gap. And they ended up having a kid. Like she went to jail and she was pregnant with his kid while she was in jail. Like that whole movie, it's wild. Cause mm-hmm. it's like a take on it, but you, it's Mary Kay Letourneau's story. But in the movie, I mean, they just, I feel like they recently got divorced or she just passed or something like that, but they were actually married for that like big age gap. Like he obviously grew up, but it is an interesting. But that age gap is like a sick uh, there. I think there's a difference between that and Kristen. Like they, yeah. those are two consenting adults. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. that kid is a product of like, to be grooming. blunt, pedophilia. Grooming, yeah, like yeah. that. That lady's a predator. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's making me sick. She's viewed as that way. Yeah, like, people view her as, as so. That. Yeah, so I don't know if it's like different, but I think in some cases it's weird though because I was watching the movie. It seemed like it was like kind of just accepted, but I know it's not. Yeah, huh. I don't know. Because I, I feel like Leo obviously gets shit for only dating twenty five year olds, but like oh, I forgot about that. I feel like he doesn't get as much shit as Kristen's getting right now, the, or even Scott Disick. The problem I He's think also with it example. is that men mature so much slower than women like a 24 year old man and a 24 year old woman are on two very different maturity levels like men don't reach their full maturity until much older in life so it's not even as like there is a double standard but I view it as like I don't know I just think a a 24 year old guy will not be as mature dating a 40 year old woman as a 40 year old man dating a 24 year old girl like I had didn't have my life together but I feel like we were all somewhat mature versus like Think about our guy friends mm-hmm. when we were 24 years old. They didn't have anything together. So I feel like it's mm-hmm. just like a difference of like maturity yeah. versus like age necessarily. What was that book we were reading? And the guy was older. Mm, the Salacious Players Club. Yes. So sick. Yeah. That was kind of hot because he was an older guy and she was a younger girl. It's like yeah. a men- not like I don't know. It seems like a mentor. I feel like with guys and girls in the double standard, I definitely think there is a double standard. I think with girls dating an older man, it you immediately think sugar baby. Like you mm-hmm. think, what is this man buying for you? Also, like if you're an older anything, man, woman, like, and you look good, people are going to talk about the fact that you look good. Like yeah. it just is mm-hmm. what it is. I feel like women, like older women, unfortunately, like society has made women what Brandon calls slam pieces and like they're seen as objects. So it's like when a guy is dating an older woman, it's like a younger guy is dating an older woman. They're immediately looked at as like, Oh, that's like a milf or like what's she like doing for you? Like how are old women? Like it's like, Mm -hmm. it immediately becomes like Mm -hmm. disrespectful. So I I feel like there is a double standard, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. I think women are in the spirit of women's month. I think women are disrespected. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. what it is. So we look a little bit older. They're like, eh, yeah, yeah. looks off-putting to people. Yeah. Well, another major thing while we're talking about TikTok and FYP is the Tarte trip to Bora Bora. So I don't know if you guys know this. I've been using Tarte since I was born. I came <laughs> out with a shape tape concealer. I've put all my friends onto Tarte. I have influenced basically all of Philadelphia to buy Tarte. So my invite did get lost in the mail, but it's okay. I will be in Bora Bora <laughs> next year. Uh, that's my thoughts on the trip. What about you guys? <laughs> well, I actually just got back from it, so I hope you have really fun next year. <laughs> um, no, it's wild. I feel like it was like uh, I was thinking the other day. I compare these tart trips like the Disney Star, the Disney Channel All Star Games, <laughs> or like the NBA All Star Games. It's like all these people that you would not expect to be in the same room together. Together, mm-hmm. like my she's my favorite influencer, Whitney Simmons. Mm-hmm. She's a fitness influencer, but she does dabble in the beauty. But like to see her, like mm-hmm. kind of how Casey is with Tana, like I've watched this girl for the past 10 years. She's the reason I've like gotten to fitness. But like to see her on this brand trip with like other people is amazing. Mm-hmm. I feel like they really like got took everybody out the pot for this. Yeah. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. 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 No, that it's you do it. It really literally is the Disney Channel All Star mm-hmm. Games. Like it's yeah. all the favorite people from all your different niches. Cause like Whitney's like a fitness niche and like there's like makeup niches and then there's like party niches, like yeah. all of them coming together. Yeah. It's a beautiful There's analogy. moms too, like mom yeah. talks, which I'm like, good, let me they deserve a break. This just this tart trip has made me I don't know. I, I like wonder if I'm just like not morally aware enough because like all my for you page is just all these people being like tar i hate tart for doing this they're wasting all their money and yes while i completely agree that this is a waste you know there's a waste there i know that they sent them like base luggage and customized dunks and all those things and whatever but like i just don't care it's a major company that's going to do that regardless as if if like a thousand people on TikTok throw away their tape shaped concealers mm-hmm. like the company all major companies are bad they're all going to do that so i don't know to me it's like it 
shape tape concealer is still the best concealer in the game. And because they threw this massive trip, I'm not going to stop using it. And it's like, am I a bad person for not caring? Like, I feel like everyone cares so much. No, I, think oh, I, I think it's so weird that people like, I understand the whole economy and it's a recession and everything, but to your point, I don't mean this to be condescending, but people who don't understand marketing and the money that goes into it, let's say they spent a million dollars on that trip. 10 years ago, they would have used, a, let's say, Jennifer Lopez. They would have mm -hmm. paid her a million dollars to get one single 30-second ad and a billboard out of it. Now they are getting 20 influencers. They're each posting like 15 videos a day. It makes so much more sense from a marketing perspective. And I feel like I don't see that many like chart paid partnerships on my For You page. So I wouldn't be surprised if they allocate all of their budget for influencer marketing to this trip once a year. Mm -hmm. You're right. I think it's like a little drama when people are like, oh my God, like I get where they're coming from, but I don't think yes. that's like the full picture. Cause to your point, I think they're spending that money anyway. It's just, it feels a lot more in your face because mm -hmm. it's, it is in your face. What were yeah. you going to say, Lens? I think it's fun to watch because like I, it's like for normal people quotes mm -hmm. around that, like you're not going to Bora Bora. Like mm -hmm. you're not getting custom dunks. You're, if you want base luggage, swipe your credit card, you're buying it. I love watching the get readies. Like Brandon and I were looking at Hallie and Jazz's Instagrams. They had this like breathtaking, like volcanic structure behind them. Might have been a volcano. And Brandon literally called out from his room. He goes, Did you see the girls' instas? They ate down. And mm -hmm. I loved looking at it. I was like, Hallie's dress, Jazz's hair. Like it is really fun for me to watch mm -hmm. it. And I do mm -hmm. love Tarte products. Like I I'd use the shape tape. Like it is a cool brand and I love that they like spend their money doing that. It's cool to watch all the different types of influencers. Mm -hmm. Like it's cool. So with like things like that, you're always going to get bad backlash. But I think, Brandon, you have a point. You're like a person who always opens my eyes to it's cool having a friend who's an influencer because Brandon will give me like those. I call them golden nuggets. I store them in the back of my brain. But Brandon will give me like the goldenest of golden. So he'll be like, let me tell you why your thinking is not logical. And I'm like, oh, from a business standpoint, like you're kind of right. Like mm -hmm. paying those people to go on this trip, it is just like content out the ass mm -hmm. instead of paying JLo a million dollars to mm -hmm. do a commercial. And you're getting lifelong partnerships. Like those people are eternally grateful and they hope that they'll get invited next year, that they're always going to use the products. Other creators who don't get invited are going to be more incentivized to make videos about Tarte, hoping they get noticed. Like, yeah, it, it could, you could look at that as manipulative, but it's also good ass marketing. Yeah. Yeah. So I always say, you know, I, I respect the game. I yeah. do, I, I do respect it. And I understand people's perspective that are like, hey, this is wasteful, but that's kind of the influencer industry in a whole. Yeah. And if yeah. that's your take on everything, I get it because influencers are overpaid and it is kind of crazy, but the reality of the situation is it's cheaper to use an influencer than it is to use a celebrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to go off like the whole like <clears throat> marketing and like budgeting and financing, if you're mad about a certain company doing paying so much money, you don't know what they're doing under the table mm -hmm. or not under the table, like not publicly. Like mm -hmm. they could be spending a million dollars, something that we don't even know about, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. horrendous. And you actually find that out later, but like it's going to happen, which sucks. Yeah. But like you don't work for the company and it's not affecting your sleep. So, right. And it's like, I, I feel like I see a lot of people being like, once they start sending nurses and teachers and doctors on these trips, like it doesn't have to be a one or the other, like, they can still do these trips and then big companies should invest in mm -hmm. sending PR to nurses and teachers and things like that. Like it doesn't have to be, we cancel all. But do they have to do that? Like this, I'm like, a, I'm all for inclusion. I'm all for diversity, but not everybody is going to get the lead role. Like if you are a nurse, I respect you. I appreciate you. I thank you. But if you're not posting get readies with me with Tarte products, why are you going on the Tarte trip? Because you help people love that. Somebody else, another brand should sponsor you, should give you some type of PR. Love that. But if you're not making content that's relevant to the brand, I don't think you should be included just because you're a good person. Like that's. I think they're talking about people who do make their content, gotcha. but I see what you're saying. Gotcha. But like, I think they're like, hey, like, the teacher who wakes up at 5 a.m. every day and uses Tarte concealer for her get ready with me to go be a kindergarten teacher, like send her a free box. Mm -hmm. Like instead of sending it to a person who makes, hey, here's my PR unboxing with 12 other companies, like send it to this one person. But if they're not making any content related to your brand, then I totally, I, I think totally there is that. like PR overkill too. Definitely. Like that girl that I've, I know I've talked about her on Queen the podcast. Queen Darcy. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've talked about her before. I love watching her videos. They're fun. 
But I look at all that stuff and I'm like, oh my God, companies, if you see her posting this stuff, stop sending it. Mm -hmm. She's exhausted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's definitely extremes. There's the extreme end that's like any kind of consumerism is awful. Influencer industries rooted in consumerism, terrible. Then there's the other end that's like, no, it's so cool. We want to watch. And like, that's kind of the out of touch end. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everyone should kind of try to see both sides and come in the middle. I'm all about being a level-headed person. I see what people are saying on both sides, but I think it makes sense to send influencers products who are going to make videos about your products and get you more sales. Products aren't free to send out. Those people are making them, they're packaging them, they're shipping them. It's better to send them to someone that might get them a return on the investment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is an influencer. I also just think you can't win. I think Tarte mm -hmm. could send 12 teachers, 12 nurses next year and there would still be people that said, this is performative. It, it, should, it shouldn't it mm should -hmm. have taken you this long. It's crazy that you do it now because we all told you to do. You'll, they're nev they know that they're never going to appease anybody. So mm -hmm. they're just like, fuck it, we're going to make money. And if you respect that, you do. And if you don't, you don't. I don't think there's a wrong answer. Mm -hmm. What else is on you guys' FYP? Um, <clears throat> I have a few. Wow. <laughs> one, all right. This one is wild, but you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I'm on like North Sea TikTok. <laughs> yeah, well. Yes, but I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've been on it though for a while because probably for like a couple years, like since TikTok, because I, that's how I found out I have like thaslophobia or whatever of like man made structures underwater or it's big objects. I like, it freaks oh. me out. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we were in Miami, I'm like, look at how big those ships are. You were really fascinated it's just by like, those boats. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm waving at everybody. <laughs> Um, so when I get on these stupid ass, like North Sea TikTok, the, yo, ho. <laughs> that song is also in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. So it's like an old, like parody song, mm -hmm. but, um, I just like, don't like it. Like just, mm -hmm. I was like, I got stuck on it. I get like scared of things, but I get stuck on, on TikTok. And I was looking at all these like oil rigs and just like the sheer size of them, like an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. This, I don't know. It just creeps me out. But I like get How do so, they build those? It, I watched the whole video on it. <laughs> They're like deep in there. They have to like, sh it's wild. Um, but I don't know. Just like, I get so creeped out by it. But I, once I hear the yo ho, I'm like, yep, here it is. Volume up. <laughs> Let's get creeped out now. Or just how like, just the ocean. Like when you just like, mm -hmm. ugh. <laughs> Nothing makes me feel more dumb than when I try to think about how a bridge is made. Mm. Because like I physically cannot oh, yeah. conceptualize like how like where do they put the pillars? Like where does it go? They're, They're like just like in the ground. Yeah, but like how do they know how far to go? How like, did they breathe? Underwater. It's, yeah, under it's, and underwater welders. Watching all of it, man. Like oh, so who scuba. tested it out? Like who was like, all right, I'll drive the car over it and see if it works. <laughs> yeah. Because that's scary as shit. <laughs> I think a lot of bridges back in the day were not functional. The Golden Gate, like, have you seen the like old videos of like they're literally in black and white of bridges like swaying in the no wind because you know they're about to collapse? Wild. Why do I get mm -hmm. onto these things? Like, how do I get <laughs> I see so much random shit like that? But I have to say my other FYP. It is me near and dear to my heart. It is Sabrina Carpenter and Barry Keegan mm. and their new relationship. And I fancy them. I really do. Mm. I got <laughs> you've been sending You're me the top. So annoying. <laughs> I've sent Bailey like twelve TikToks. Unfortunately, I've been already seen them because I've been like because I love that girl. I love her voice. Like she's just like my modern day pop star. Like I was listening to um thinking of you or t something earlier but the nonsense song I love. But I was just mm -hmm. like she like just makes the music for the girls and like her mm -hmm. and Barry are so cute. They're both like little kind yeah. of, and they like are perfectly sized for each other and all of his reactions at the Eras tour. His Irish accent. And if you haven't seen The Killing of a Sacred Deer, which is his best film, watch it. And then listen to a Sabrina Carpenter song and think, wow, they belong together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my other thing. I'm just really happy for them. I'm into Aww. it. I'm into it. <laughs> Casey, what's on yours? Honestly, the Tart Trip. I have been consuming it. Like, I feel like I say this every week. Like, when one thing is on my furry page, it's the it's only awful. thing. Yeah. Like, it, like, because I love it. So I, like, watch every video to completion. So then TikTok's like, oh, it's, like, you like it. Keep going. Keep going. Like, I don't scroll past shit. Yeah. So I kind of mm -hmm. do it to myself. You got anything, Lens? Yeah. I have two words. William Conrad. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of him. Mm -hmm. He is, like, a male version of Nara Smith. But, like different mm. he'll present you with a gorgeous decadent dish it'll be like a baked lasagna and he'll be like 
hello, darling. Today we're having lasagna bolognese with a homemade bolognese sauce. And I'm like, oh, ASMR, talk to me, William. Then he'll show you how he made it, but the way that he does it with ingredients that he doesn't necessarily make himself. But he will present you this dish, and it usually those videos give me cringe, like where I'm like, oh. Mm-hmm. But something about him just makes me feel relaxed and okay and safe, and I hope that they never leave my FYP. Mm. Oh, okay. Brand? Do you like satis- uh, Sorry, I have a question. Do you like satisfying TikToks? Like the ones so much. Yeah, I feel like that is like your for you page is like satisfying aesthetic it like, gives me i love when people decorate their coffee bars soap carving there's this one girl on tiktok and i i cannot remember her name but she does these reaction videos to things like breaking or like yep. moving and she's so funny she has like yes. a british accent she'll be like oh no it's not supposed to break like that <laughs> i don't like that stop it stop and i love listening to her because it's stupid it's comedy it's gas yeah. Yeah. next to satisfying it's i love when there's a good combo. one she's like oh yes that's lovely yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> My FYP, um, I have a favorite creator this week. My creator of the week goes to Hallie Vachelder. Mm-hmm. She is my favorite kind of storyteller, like someone who just does not hold back. She, speaking of the North Sea, she was talking about someone that she hooked up with, said that he sounded like the North Sea. <laughs> and there is just one video that lives rent free in my mind. She started a story time off with a taser, mm-hmm. literally goes, with her taser, like she's like, Hi, it's Hallie, you're watching Disney Channel. I'm like, Oh, that's the whole video. Gets into a story. And I'm like, That is good <laughs> ass storytelling. Just to start off with the most unhinged hook to a video. She has a she has a track that she'll play before a video. Like she'll play a, a song and be like, dun, 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 and she'll be like, let's get into it. And I'm like, oh my mm-hmm. God, sister. And she just like owns everything. Like she's never gonna be the type of girly who's like, my job is hard. Like she's just I feel like she's very out of touch to the point that she's in touch. Mm. Like she's in touch with her out of touchness and she she's just so authentic and genuine. She's welcome on this couch any fucking day. Mm-hmm. Love that girl. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's finish this week off with an immunity necklace. And I have one. <clears throat> if your apology does not include a game plan for how you're going to change your behavior, save it. Ooh. I am so sick of hearing empty i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry there comes a point where you're not fucking sorry and if i have to tell you what to be sorry for or how to fix it then that's a bunch of bullshit and that's all i have to say on that that was a good one yeah, that was great yeah well there you guys have it <laughs> that's our episode of between us girlies we'll catch you next week for an amazing weekend recap and some more fun activities bye guys